Trading Nut, episode 53. The language that you're using will be a really good giveaway to what your belief is. So what are you saying? Write down, what is your belief about money? Straight away, from your head, what is it? What is your belief about wealth building? What is your belief about you deserving wealth? Whatever the language that comes out, if you're lo- using imperative language that I must make money, I'm, I should be successful, I should be wealthy, that sort of imperative language, that's 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 subjugating yourself to somebody else's or society's or what you perceive to be what society expects from you. The market's going to do something. Your job is not to fight it. The market never, ever runs away. It's always there. That personal diary of trading will make you a much better trader than I could be right about the direction, but wrong about the trade. Don't focus on the monetary side. Trying to make too much money on a trade is what I have seen killed every trader. Your losses offer you some of the greatest insight you can find into your mistakes. Relax, learn the process. Candlestick pattern trading is a freaking trap. Don't be in a rush to become a millionaire. Let the market tell you what the market wants to tell you. This podcast is not financial trading or investing advice of any kind. What's up, traders? Welcome to another installment of the Trading Up Podcast. I'm your host, Cam Hawkins, and today we've got Judy Vanekirk back on the show. Now, she's been on the show before from the Tribe of Traders, and we've got her back on. Now, this time, it's a slightly different kind of interview. It's not my standard questions. We're actually going in deep on money psychology, so your relationship to money. We we talk about a lot in the show, a lot, and it's because trading is so uh, linked to money, we we dive deep in how it could be affecting what you're doing on the charts, in the market, and all that sort of stuff. Now, there's a couple of things here. So, one is there's a there's a free 14 day challenge that you can take at the end of the show. So, I'll give you a link to that uh, in a second. Now, the 14 day challenge is run by Judy and. I suppose what I want to sort of reiterate here is that you can do a lot in 14 days. It, it takes me back to what I mentioned a few weeks ago, which was, you know, I've moved to a plant-based diet. I'm only having uh, vegetables. I've even sort of moved further into the more vegan type diet even. So trying to almost cut down all milk, uh, cheese, dairy product, all that sort of stuff as well. Very hard, I've got to say. Um, but I did watch a doco on Netflix, which I hadn't seen before. It's only new, and I do recommend checking it out because it does sort of, uh, I suppose, it validates everything that I've been doing and the sort of shift. It sort of tells you that, look, it's probably a lot of the stuff you've learned before is is myth and old wives' tale and something that, like, and I'll tell you a story in a second, something that uh, your, your parents might have taught you uh, or told you. Now, this stock is called The Game Changers, so go and check that out on Netflix if you've got Netflix when you've got a minute. Now, um, it takes me back to my mum. So my mum, uh, she, like, I told her that, oh, like, I've gone plant-based, and she was like, what? Oh, dear. Now, I remember your football coach telling you that, um, you you need to have a steak before you play a football match. And I'm like, okay, yeah, but my football coach was just a guy who ran a printing business. He he wasn't a nutritionist or anything like that, and he was trying to get a whole bunch of 12-year-old kids to play football. So, And this was back in the like early 1990s slash late 80, 1980s. Things have changed. Anyway, so these... My mum is like, you know, knocking on the door of 80 and riddled apparently with arthritis. So I heard yesterday from my wife. Uh, and it's like two weeks, a lot can change in two weeks. Why doesn't she just give the plant based diet or something dramatically different a go for two weeks? And I suppose that's it. A lot can happen in two weeks. You just try it and see what happens. Somebody else said the other day, like, oh, but. How, how would I do it? It's like, well, simple. You just don't eat meat for two weeks. It's easy. Start with that and then move on to dairy. Just don't eat dairy for two weeks. It's only two weeks. So, guys, a lot can happen in two weeks. What I do recommend is signing up to uh, what Judy's put together, which is a 14-day challenge. Uh, the link will be uh, tradingnut.com forward slash 14-day or 14 days, I'll make sure both of them go, so just in case you put a typo in, so 14 day, forward slash 14 day, and you've got to get a 14 day challenge, and on the back of the uh, the sign up form, there's actually another video that she shot with uh, a world 
renowned behavioral or human, I think it's human behavioral scientist or doctor. Um, it's a great watch, 23 minutes. You'll learn so much based on the interview you're just about to hear and this interview that Judy does with, um, I'm not going to say his name, but you'll find it on the back of the registration form. So go and check that out. Short URL is tradingnut.com forward slash 14 day or 14 days. And uh, or you'll also find the link on the show notes page over there at Trading Nut. All right, guys. So right, without further ado, let's get on with this interview uh, with Judy. All right, guys. So we got Judy Vanekirk here on the show again from Tribe of Traders. Uh, she's now the author of the book Truth About Trading. Uh, obviously, she is the creator of the Pogo and Bugsy Automated Trading Strategies. You've been on the show before, Judy. How are things over there in the UK? They are brilliant. Thank you, Cam. How are you doing? Oh, look, look, things are going really well here. We're heading into summer. So, uh, yeah, look, great time of year for me in particular. <laughs> that make me jealous. <laughs> oh, the winter's been like just long and arduous. It's been, I'm like, okay, I'm ready for summer now. I'm over this. Um, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. And I'm just dealing with all the time changes with the, with the daylight savings going on. So it means all my trading's over the place with like the opens of the markets, which I usually trade are all um, shifting and they shift twice during like a three week period when we wow. move, then the then uh, what happens? I think, yeah, we, we move from where we were, then the UK move, I think this weekend. And so That's next right. week, I've got new times again. It's just a real awkward three weeks because I'm just got to remember the times that things happen. Um, yeah, and, and the bummer is it happens twice a year too. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. It is a real pain. Um, but I think, yeah, so now I'm not really looking forward to going forward because I think I've got to be up later to get the get the, the, the markets that I typically trade. So anyway, that's my, that's my woes. But today we're here to talk not 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 what you've talked uh, not speak about what you've spoken about before but we're sort of going to dive into something that's been i suppose on the back of my mind for a while it's uh and it's something i've i've asked a few people people who are sort of you know i suppose either mindset gurus or what have you all about relationship with money and how that affects your trading and we've had guys on the show here before who have had to overcome this in one way or another there's some crazy stories about how they did it uh but i know you're a bit of an expert at this i've been speaking to tiny as well and he's been telling me how you've managed to transform a a number of people um from being i suppose quite attached to to the money to, to sort of freeing themselves from from whatever control it has so um how do you want? How do you want to? What's the best way to to start this conversation, Judy? Is it to to talk about how what you go through in your book, or or shall we sort of dive straight well, into like what what a how do traders sort of their relationship with money, like how how does it, how is it so? I suppose it is tied up. It is tied together intrinsically, but how so? And what's different about trading compared to everything else people do? Right. Okay. Well, the first thing that um, I think the best way, the most powerful way to jump into this is to say or ask, um, if you are trading, ask yourself, do you love money? And think about it. Think about it. Yeah. yeah. Most some people's instant response might be, yeah, of course, what's up to love about money? But that's, that's just the ego. But um, think about it. Just take a step back. Put your hand on your heart even. Whatever it is, just really think about it and ask yourself, do you really love money? Because when I ask people that, I've asked people this several times over the past few months uh, when speaking on various stages or even um, in in, uh, workshops and stuff. And almost to the last person, they say, "Mm, no. Well, my, my comment to that, my response to that is, I'm sorry, you cannot get sustainable profitability or sustainable success in trading if you do not love money. And and what do you mean by love money? Just to sort of clarify that, because because I suppose that like loving money is it doesn't mean you love hoarding money, or does it mean you um, love making money, or does it mean you uh, love love the look of it, or what? Can you expand on that word, you know, that love, what does love money mean? Because, yeah, love, I'm sure it can love, mean a whole love, lot of different things to different people. 
money, money is nothing but the physical manifestation of spirit. So the greater the extent you've got self-worth, you will have net worth. There's a direct correlation between your net, your self-worth and your net worth at 100%. And the more in which you can love and embrace money and wealth, the greater you are um, in terms of your self-worth, a higher level of energetically, you're vibrating on a higher level um, energetically. But when, when I talk about loving money, but a lot of people have a lot of shame and guilt associated with money and they have a lot of um, discomfort around money because they believe money is evil, money is bad, money is hard to get. Uh, money makes bad things happen, makes you beat about things. Money makes you narcissistic. Money makes you mean and all of these things. People have got so many connotations associated with money and wealth. For example, a lot of people will find narcissistic people um, a lot of wealthy people, narcissistic, for example. And all that is, is the fact that wealthy people stand in their power. They own the fact that they deserve wealth. And all money does, it makes you, a, you know, the more money you have will, be, will mean that you're the bigger, greater version of who you already are. If you are a mean, horrible person, you're going to poor, you're going to be a mean, horrible person, wealthy. But if you're like a, you know, grounded, kind, loving generous, uh, free-spirited person, poor, that's exactly what you'll be when you're wealthy. You won't be any different. But but there's so many issues uh, associated with money that we carry it, and and it's it's ingrained into us from from neonatal states, from when we're born to right through our life, that money is hard, money is evil, money is bad, money is the root of all evil, all that garbage. Um, So, you know, whereas people on a level on an intuitive level, on a soul level, know that money is not bad, but on an ego ego level or and where, where people subjugate themselves to what societal norms are will feel that they shouldn't really love money. That doesn't stop people trying to acquire it. And this is where the dichotomy comes in. This is the mismatch. This is why people want to trade. They love to trade. They see the benefit of trading. They see that they could build phenomenal wealth in trading. But when they have an inherent belief that money is bad or they don't love money or they don't deserve money or they feel money is um, they feel guilty about wanting money or building money or building worth, you've got you've got a, a mismatch. You're not the whole person. You're polarized. So you're absolutely going to sabotage your um you're trading. There's no doubt about it. Now, here's the thing. Money is nothing but the physical manifestation of spirit. So the, what that means is it's to the, the extent of which you have self-worth, you will have net worth. And what builds self-worth is the more balanced you are in terms of your perceptions of everything in your life, past, present, and future. But if you are carrying baggage like it, issues around shame or guilt or even regret, that is going to be pulling you down and that is going to be impacting directly your ability to make money or build wealth. The people often say to me, well, I'm successful in my businesses. Why am I, why I I can make money in my business. I can make money in my career. I get promotions and all that, but I just cannot get success or, or consistent success in trading, Forex trading specifically. Why is that? And that's because you don't know uh, what your ceiling is. We all have a world ceiling. We all have a a level to which we can get to. And that will be the level of our self-worth. And the the issue is breaking through that. Now, if you've got a business, if you're working in in a corporate or got a job, you don't know where those blocks are you you know it's must you you can right say it on so many different ways that you're not lucky or somebody else is better than you or whatever it is you can use 101 excuses as to why you don't progress but with trading you cannot there is no place for excuses there's just you the market the chart and you placing a trade and the instantaneous feedback that that gives you and the more in which you are aware or self-aware the more on which you will actually be successful in trading. But the more you are locked down, blocked by layers and layers of of, um, lopsided perceptions or polarized perceptions and carrying shame and guilt, the more um, clutter you have in your brain, the less self-aware you'll be. And 
forex trading more than anything in the world. There's two things about it. One, there is not a better way that you can build wealth, in my opinion. It is a skill once mastered. You have it for life. And there's no better way to compound your wealth than forex trading. It's, it's the single greatest way to build wealth, in my opinion. The second thing is, though, because it's so instant feedback, it is also the most challenging. And that's why I call trading the gift that keeps on giving because you, you are forced to become self-aware. You are forced to become aware of what your perceptions are, what your beliefs are, and what are driving your beliefs and start unpacking what is the what are the lopsided or polarized perceptions that you're carrying from your past and your current and also the future. What are you carrying with you? Um, and bringing into your trading because you can't mask it. You can't right say it. You can't keep right saying losing trades. You know, at some point in other, you're going to say, um, you know, everyone, other people make money. It is possible to make money in the markets. Why am I not making money? Because there's no shortage of profitable strategies. I mean, I see it with even Pogo and Bugsy. It's got an average of an 83% success rate. So if traders are not at least getting between 60 to 80% success rate on those strategies, you've got to step back and say, well, what's going on here? Because those strategies have been proven every single month that the market gives that those opportunities to give it an 83% success rate. So if it's not the market, it's not the strategy, then it's oneself. Um, and that is directly related to what I call your wealth thermometer. And I suppose, I suppose there's a stepping back a bit because that's a lot for people to take in. And um, I think if we sort of de- decompile this in, in a bit of detail, it'll, it'll help the listeners out. So thinking about the types of people, I mean, there's like I know, like I've surveyed these guys. I know who they are. They're, they, you know, you've got guys who are, who are businessmen. You've got guys who are employees. You've got you know, senior management. So you've got people from all, the, all spectrums and probably some students in there, all, although probably not that many. Uh, so... The, <laughs> First of all, the people who are like in paid employment, like I mean, I, I deal with probably these people quite more often than not. Uh, these are the these are the people that I will you know speak to probably in my regular sort of normal life here, um, doing things, going and playing football, or uh, if I've got a contract and going to the contract and, and I'm in the office environment. These are the sort of people that I'm I'm dealing with and and talking to and uh, interacting with and. What I've noticed, and it's probably been in the last three or four years, is there's certain people who really, every time they talk about anything, uh, in particular to do with money, they've got such a negative spin on it. And it's everything costs too much, everything's too expensive, and everything they say and do around that is like done in such a way that it's almost like, oh, you know, the, yeah. the big like, oh, it's, oh, look at the price of this, or oh, yeah, well, yeah. That would be great, but oh, it costs so much. This sort of thing. I mean, how do you how do you help those people? Um, okay, that that is a massive. In, in fact, to even go a step further, one of the biggest indicators for me as well with people who would have an issue around their relationship with money is when they say when they start. Well, if I get profitable, I have to pay tax. It's this whole tax thing. Well, I today say, listen. Be grateful you're paying tax because that means you're making money. You know, turn that on its head. Start loving tax because if you are, I mean, there's two things guaranteed in life and that's death and tax. You're not going to get away from it. And so start loving it as that to me is a massive indicator of an issue around your relationship with money. Um, I'm not saying you just go and gay abandon and just pay oodles amount of tax over and above what you what you should be paying. Of course, be sensible about it, and and take advantage of every single um, um, every single um, opportunity in terms of um, savings, in terms of what tax you pay. But be grateful for the fact you pay tax. Um, but essentially, to answer your question, Cam, you know, what do you? How do you deal with that? Well, the first thing is. The higher your self-worth, the more powerful and supportive your beliefs are. Um, The lower your self-worth, the more you are um, trapped in in a belief set um, that is being driven by shame and guilt that you're carrying for perceptions that you have um, or for um, 
for challenges or experiences you've had and the meaning you've applied to them throughout your life. And when, this is what I do with our traders. We've got a program called Master Plan Your Trading Success. And one of, one of the modules in that is we go back through your life in all different seven areas of life, you know, mentally, uh, um, ed, uh, in education, in family, in, in all different the seven areas, physically, all different seven areas of life, and go back into what have you experienced, what are the challenges, where have you got polarized perceptions on what you what your experiences are that you've had, you know, and some of them could be like down to not being heard as a child, or um, living in poverty, or being browbeaten for wanting to be successful. Or for st- even like for being very successful in school and being ostracized as a result of it. All of these experiences build up layers and layers of shame and guilt that we carry in with us into adulthood. Um, and that what that energetically does to us is it gets us to like vibrate on much lower levels. In fact, um, there is, um, if you listeners haven't heard of Hawkins Levels of Consciousness, it's a really good resource to go and check out. And Van Tarp, I'm sure every trader will have heard of Van Tarp. He, his, his perception, he believes that unless you are vibrating on a 350 to 400 level on the Hawkins Level of Consciousness, you cannot be successful. And in my body of work, I've got what I call the Trilogy of Challenges. And it starts off at the bottom of the layer where you need to charge your challenges, with, which means you need to e- equilibrate your polarized perceptions around everything, including any shame, guilt, regret that you're carrying with you. Because if you are doing that, you're vibrating energetically on a very low level, um, like the sub 350 level um, on the Hawkins level of consciousness. And when you're vibrating down at those low levels energetically, and we are all just energy, that is what we're going to be propagating into our life and out of our life. So what goes in, in whatever, is, whatever is in our life externally is just an absolute mirror reflection of what's going on inside. So if we have scarcity, if we have um, fear, if we have um, poverty around us in our life, if we have... Um, uh, negative negativity, conflict in our life, that is a direct reflection to what's going on inside. If in your life you've got abundance, and that doesn't necessarily mean that you are the multimillionaire you want to be, but you have a perception of abundance. You know that everything's within your grasp, that you can achieve whatever it is that you would love to achieve. When you've got that abundant mindset, when you've got, when your life is surrounded by, um, I suppose, joy and uh, and everything's in flow, that's a direct reflection of what's inside. So the higher your self-worth, the higher your net worth, they are 100% intrinsically related and integrated. And so how does somebody, or could you give three tips, for example, of how somebody could increase their self-worth? Right, so if we, okay, so the, the biggest thing, one of the biggest shame and pities in in the world in my opinion is that we are not taught about the importance of language you know our language and the words that we use are the greatest the biggest and the most powerful insight into what we really genuinely believe all right because we should always spend our time trying to right say things but in actual fact it's our language that tells us what the truth is when when you are able to understand what and be self-aware to the point where you really understand what the internal dialogue is, you are absolutely powerfully able to do something about it. Um, so the language that you're using will be a really good giveaway to what your belief is. So what are you saying? Write down what is your belief about money straight away from your head. What is it? What is your belief about um, uh, wealth building? What is your belief about you deserving wealth, whatever the language that comes out, if you're lo- using imperative language that I must make money, I'm, I should be successful, I should be wealthy, that sort of imperative language, that's, that's, that's subjugating yourself to somebody else's or society's um, uh, or what you perceive to be what society expects from you. Whereas if you change that language, you're finding yourself saying things like, I would love to, I would like to, I need to. If you're using that sort of directive language, then that's completely the opposite. That's coming from inside. That's coming from an inspired state. And when you 
when you are, when you develop habits and you live a life from, from what I call the heart center, the inspired state, you do not need outside motivation and you certainly do not need discipline. Because a lot of people talk about being disciplined, about following your trade rules and stuff like that. But when you are um, heart-centered and you're, you're trading from within and you're, tra- you're trading from a state of inspiration where you have balanced your perceptions and you're not carrying layers and layers of shame and guilt, you do not need discipline because you were inspired to do what it is you do. And we can all get there. We can absolutely all get there. No matter where you are right now, it is possible. So what are your beliefs? What has happened to you that you have a negative emotion attached to? What are your unsupported beliefs? So what I do is I get people to write down what are their beliefs about trading? What are their beliefs about money? And what of those are not supportive? Um, What are um, limiting beliefs? And which one of those then have a charge associated with it which one of those um has an emotion attached to it and then where did it come from where's the first time you experienced it where where does it originate from go back through your life look in all different seven areas of your life walk back and think about where it and if it's a particular event like for example um you like i've heard this a few times actually where um a um a child as a child Um, They wanted to be an entrepreneur to make money, but this was uh, to make money to save in order to buy something. This happened a few times. I've heard it a few times from clients, Um, but it was discouraged by parents because um, money is evil. Money is bad. You shouldn't want to do money. You should rather be, you should, what is this saying? Um, Giving back or something like that or? Better to give give than receive. That's the, that's the, that's the psyche in the family unit. Um, whereas, so there's guilt associated there for that, um, child in wanting to build, um, wealth as a child, you know, it could be $10, it could be $50, it could be a hundred dollars for a bicycle, but there's guilt associated with that. And they grow up with that polarized perception where heart and soul knows they want to, and would love to have wealth because that would make them a greater version of who they already are. And having wealth allows you to live out live to live a life to the fullest potential to your fullest potential to achieve your purpose what you are here to be do and have but instead their ego the amygdala is telling them that it is that they're evil they're bad it's and then they're feeling guilty and they have shame associated with that so what i do i identify what that is where did that belief come from because nine times out of ten it's from outside of you where did it come from then start balancing your perception around that. Instead of labeling it, that's what my parents did to me. How did your parents do that for you as well? Because we, everything has two sides. We've heard over and over again, there's two sides to a story. Everything is balanced. The universe is balanced. There's black, there's night and day, there's good and evil. Everything is balanced. And the more in which we can look at the experiences that we've had or the beliefs that we have and see that there's another side to it as well. You balance your perception around it. And the more you're able to do that, you lose the charge, you lose the emotion and you become awakened to the gift that there is actually in having experienced that. And, and that, that literally dissolves it instantaneously. Physiologically, it does so in your, um, in your brain. It instantaneously remyelinates your brain in that moment when you're able to do that and so uh, so i suppose so you you've given us the 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 tip of like you know correcting your self talk now what's the easiest way to do that that's that's quite i mean it's it's easier said than done so is there is there an easy way for somebody to to, to be able to correct it on a regular basis um well, I think um, there's certainly, there's a number of ways to do it. And different people will, will be drawn to doing it different ways. One of them would be, um, would be um, you know, meditating, right? That's the one way, but, but that's not for everybody. But certainly, um, there's, there, there's no, I'm going to be honest with you, Cam, there's no absolutely really easy way because the, e- the, the, the easiest way to do it means you've got to do something that's actually very hard. Right. And it sounds <laughs> counterintuitive, okay? And what it is is 
you need to be able to be 100% honest with yourself. And it's my opinion that that is the single hardest thing that we can do. We find it so hard to be honest with ourselves because we're running, um, we generally live life from the amygdala. You know, we uh, fight or flight, uh, predator, prey. We run to, um, to pleasure away from pain. That's where we're running from. And that's where, that's, that's where we live most of our life. We need to step out of that, become more heart-centered. And when the more you are heart-centered, the more you will see the truth of the dialogue that's going on in your mind. So what is it that you can do to get you out of your head, into your heart, and start listening to that language? Because that language is the truth. And, it's and not what, you, the sorry, what do you mean by heart-centered? It means you're getting in, you literally, literally go from your head to your heart. You'll feel it in your chest. You'll know when you're dialoguing from your chest. You know when it's when that's the truth. You 100% know that. Some people get there with meditation. Other people get there with being inspired. Some people, one of the things that I learned to do in my life, because I had a pretty tragic background, and that's why I, I know this, but the power of the mind um, and how to shift your perceptions and your beliefs so powerfully because I've had to do it. And one of the things that I've learned is I've learned to anchor um, myself to a state of inspiration. There's a couple of things that I, well, there's three things that I absolutely love um, that will instantaneously put me into my heart center. Um, One of them is listening to seagulls. If I need to get inspired, if I need to reconnect with my soul, my heart, I, I'll just go out and walk by the river and I'll hear seagulls and instantly that will put me into that state. Looking at water, moving water, that does it. Smelling cut grass does it. What does it do for you? What is it for you? What is it that really, really gets you, gets your goosebumps, gets your hair standing up? Put yourself into that state, into that scenario and stay with it. Now, here's the thing. the heart. We can generally stay with a really good state, a really good uh, moment for like three or four seconds. Staying with it for 20 seconds, that's impossible, virtually impossible. We can stay with negative emotion for, for forever, but stay in that inspired state for 20 seconds. Try that. It'll be very, very hard, but try it and then try it for 30 seconds and then try it for a minute. And the more you can get into that state, the more you're, you're opening the channel between your brain and your heart. And that's when you can actually start getting connected there. You need to get out of the head, out of the amygdala, out of the the desire for instant gratification, instant reward, and driving towards um, pleasure and away from pain. Because the thing is, it's like the word passion. People don't really understand the word passion. When you say, I'm passionate about trading, great. That means that if you're passionate about trading, you're passionate about embracing the support and challenge that trading will give you equally. But if you keep on running from one strategy to another strategy to another because the strategy keeps giving you pain, you're not passionate about trading and you're not passionate about wealth building. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And and so so what about, for example, somebody who's, you know, a successful senior manager, they've, you know, they've got they got the big house, the big car, or multiple cars, they go on a holiday every year and they've got a good salary, uh, they've, you know, got some got a quite a powerful position within their organization they want to get into trading they're struggling to make it work what what are your sort of views on their potential issues with with money yeah um that's a really good question i was actually asked that last night um at a, on a webinar with our clients um you that that scenario let's say um this person is a woman very successful and she is a CEO of her own business and she's got like 5 million or 7 million turnover, got staff and as you say, a lovely house and and so on. Um, She will know in her heart, she will absolutely 100% know in her heart that she's, there's, she hasn't, she's not achieving her full potential. Absolutely. She will know that in her heart that she's not achieving her full potential. She knows there's more to life. You're on the, on the face of it, on the surface of it, you look at, it, look at her life and you think, oh, my God, she's got everything. She must be super happy, super inspired. She just, there's nothing she doesn't need. Well, in actual fact, internally, she will be in what I call a form of hell because she'll know that there's so much more that she could do and she's leaving so much on the table, you know, 
whether it be money or opportunity or, or whatever it is, she'll know that in her heart. And then when she goes then to try and, and trade, forex trade, she will battle. She will battle because you can write, say, you don't have to face it to the same extent in, in all other areas of wealth building or money making as much as you do in forex trading. Forex trading brings it out, brings it to the brings it to light. You can't hide from it. Now she would typically, when she would go to try and tra- to tra- would go to trade, she would battle. Even though she's massively successful elsewhere, she will battle um, to get consistent results in her trading until she addresses what it is that she feels is not yet fulfilled. Why is it that she is holding back? Why does she feel that she is leaving money on the table, not reaching her full potential? There's just something missing. And when she starts addressing those issues around anything that she's carrying, any lopsided perceptions, any shame or guilt she's carrying, anything to do with her relationship with uh, money, her perceptions around um, her beliefs that have been formed around her perceptions of past experiences, until she addresses that, she won't be successful in forex trading. The moment she is, the moment she's then consistent with her trading, everything else changes. That's why I call it the gift that keeps on giving because it just doesn't, it doesn't just impact your trading. It, your trading mirrors your life. And whatever's coming up in your trading is what's going on in your life. And then when you deal with that in your trading, it's going to impact all areas of your life. And once she does that, get successful and consistent in her trading, her business will also take off, not just her business, but any any relationships. If she's been having relationship challenges with a partner or with children, with parents, that all instantaneously resolves as well during this process. I've had clients say to me over and over again, if you ask my clients, why do they love working with the tribe of traders? Nine times out of 10, it won't be t- they won't tell you that it's because they make money or because they're successful in trading, which it's a, it's a given. They'll tell you because everything in their life has changed. Their whole life has changed. It's unbelievable. Um, you know, we've had comments in our group with people thinking about starting to learn to trade. And they'll, they said, well, should they do it? And this, the, this is the comment that most of our guys say mm. is life changes when you get trading right. Yeah, I've heard that before. I've heard that before a long time ago from a uh, somebody who's uh, very successful in the future space. And actually, he was on my 52 Traders podcast. And he, I remember he said, um, he said, once you get trading right, you actually become a better person person as a whole. It's sort of like yeah. you almost yeah. just improve as a whole for whatever reason. Yeah, what, what, how I like to frame it is that you become the fullest expression of your potential. Um, and, and you start, you know, you step into the role of uh, living the life that you have a vision for. Um, it changes everything. You know, we've had guys who have uh, reconnected with um their um, children who because of many 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 years has been a disconnect and we've had people who their relationship with their um, partner has transformed um, their businesses have transformed it's it's just it's incredible that's why I say that's why I like even if you just make one percent a month in trading you know it's great you're going to make some money you're going to make more than just the banks and then putting money in the bank but if, once you get that level of consistency everything changes it is just amazing it truly is the gift that keeps on giving if you're prepared to do that work. Now, here's the thing, Cam. I have never, ever, ever met a person who's regretted doing that work. Not one. And I've been doing this type of work for almost 20 years. But I have met a lot of people who don't want to do it, who won't do it. And I've just got all I say to them, what's the worst that can happen? What is the worst that can happen? Don't you think it is, just step back, take a moment and think about it. Would you not absolutely love to get to know who you really are? Don't you deserve that? Everyone deserves that. Everyone deserves, everyone has a divine right to great wealth. And with great wealth, you've got great self-worth. You live to the fullest expression of your potential. Everyone deserves that. Why would you not want that for yourself to be, do and have everything that you were put here to be, do and have? What's the worst that can happen? And what, and why do you think that trading is 
sort of almost like the the gateway to that it's the instant feedback it's so instant because because you're battling when like i um is the oh yeah what, I why, I suppose, yeah, why, why instant this? feedback why is the instant what how is it that this is instant feedback on it's a it's simply a decision you made right it's a it decision is a decision you, you made and because we live night because we live so much in in our head with the amygdala the fight or flight and because we live so much we need we when we're living in the amygdala um when we're living um for predator and prey in that in that framework you need to be right you have to be right because if not otherwise you're going to get eaten right if you're if you're in the in the animal world you're going to get eaten or you'll fail or um you'll be a failure we have to be right that's the that's the that is the uh challenge that people have when it comes to trading we need to be right and we all know that we cannot be right the market's always right we're never right our role is to tip away and to slowly consistently take a little bit from the market and and the other thing is as well is because people have this perception is that when they trade and they lose trades is they were wrong they were wrong and that generates a whole host of emotions for them and it it reinforces beliefs about shame guilt and and regret and not being good enough and all the supportive uh, unsupportive limiting beliefs that so many people have that have evolved through living through the amygdala living in your head um all that does is it reinforces that and the biggest the biggest issue is that because we need to be right and and because we need to be right works in so many different areas of life it works when you're building a business you need to be right right that's great when you're buying property you need to be right but you've got longer term longer time to when you see that okay maybe you weren't so right you can adjust you can tweak you can really you've got a longer lead time with trading you don't you put on a trade and it's you know it either wins or it loses and sometimes within seconds so um, it's more instant. It's more in your face. You've got you can't do anything about it once the decision's made. It's made. That's it. Um, you know, it's not like uh, buying a house or buying stocks, even where you've got longer. You've got a part of a portfolio. You've got a longer time lead time. Um, whereas with forex trading, it's in out, and it that's that is why it is the hardest thing to master unless you are completely self aware. And you're able to listen to the inner dialogue, and what I call what well, it, there's this thing called a knowledge um, knowledge based intuition. And when you're able to follow that rather than fear, you actually um, you you become more in tune with the market, and uh, it it you're more you you're trading more from the heart center than you than your head. But there are other ways in which you can reframe it that help you on that journey. And one of them is, and, and this is most people, I've spoke about it briefly, I think on the last podcast, but it's the one thing that is, it's a really powerful way to reframe training, trading to help you on this journey. And that is to treat trading as a business. Now, everybody knows how to run a business. And instead of seeing losses, as losses, as that you were wrong, just see it as a cost of sale in the business of trading. Just reframe stuff in your mind. And, and the other thing is like your winning trades are your sales. Your strategy is your product. So ha- start applying a business mindset to your trading. That will help you get out of the emotion of it where you're absolutely needing to be right and start looking at it from a strategic point of view. And and I suppose, like, I mean, I've heard that, you know, I heard that on episode eight of the 52 Traders podcast. So my eighth episode, Treat Trading as a Business. And for whatever reason, I know that that's harder said than done. Why is it so hard to, like, somebody can say that, right? It's easy to say, but how do you then go about treating it like a business when it's just completely not one? What's What well, are your I- tips? Oh, oh, I know. But for Cam, absolutely, trading is a business. And here's the thing: trading is 100% a business. And the single, the first way to do to treat trading as a business is how you allocate your time to trading. This yeah, is what's, I suppose. Yeah, I know, from a from a financial point of view, yep, there's profit and loss. But it's, no, no, but. But, but also, but in terms of, I'm sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna debate you on this one. So the, so the, like, I mean, you don't need to you don't need to do any marketing. 
you don't need to do any sales you don't need to get lawyers involved you don't like so there's you don't need to register a company to start off with at least anyway so i mean how do how does somebody get to the point where they sort of see it as a you know can get can make that sort of statement feel more real Okay, so you start off with, you wouldn't start a business without a, without a business plan. You should not. If you are trying to start a business without a business plan, you, um, you'd be wise to stop and create a business plan. So that's the first thing. So your business plan is your trading plan, your business trading plan. That's what we call it. Our template, our template for our business trading plan is 47 pages. Okay, you need to know that off by heart and you need to rehearse it. That's the first thing. The second thing is like any business, let's say, for example, it's a coffee shop. You are going to make you, you've got a coffee shop, you've got it on the street corner and it open from 7.30 in the morning till 12.30 um, in the afternoon, right? And you're open five days a week uh, because you're in a business center, right? That's, 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 the, that's your business, yeah. right? You cannot turn up at 11 o'clock in the morning on Tuesday because you didn't feel like getting up. You cannot turn up at uh, six o'clock the next morning and expect to have customers between six and seven thirty when you're actually supposed to just open at seven thirty. Your business will fail flat on its face. Same as trading. Unless you are consistent about how you trade, the approach you take to trading, and you allocate time to it and take it out of the hobby, hobby take it out of hobby land or um, ha- out of just uh, check and see land, and actually be strategic about it and have a time in which you dedicate to trading, um, you're setting yourself up for failure, like any business. That's the first thing. Second of all, if you are spending, you need to be mindful of the amount of time you're putting into trading as well. Because if you're spending 10 hours a day glaring at charts, chasing chart trades, uh, willing trades to go to profit or stay away from t- stop loss, whichever it is, um, if you're spending 10 hours a day sitting in front of charts, you're lowering your return on investment on your time. Whereas if you're able to do that same task in just half an hour, in, it's in the tribe of traders, our philosophy is if you're spending more than 45 minutes a day trading, you're, you're doing it wrong. And if you're, so your return on investment uh, for doing the same job in 45 minutes is way higher than 10 hours because so many people spend way too much time in front of the charts. Bring it down to 45 minutes. You've got a higher return on investment. That directly impacts your, your, your self-worth and net worth. And that as well is, is a business approach to trading. That, you know, that's important in business. You need to know what your return on investment is for your time and your business. Right? That's the th- first thing. The second thing is there as no business on the planet that does not have cost of sales. Not one. Um, and that includes trading. And your cost of sales and trading are your losing trades. You have to have losing trades. It's you. There is absolutely no ways you can trade one hundred percent without a losing trade. So your your cost of sales are your losing trades. Your sales are your winning trades. Your product in your business is well researched. You've got a coffee shop. You're going to research which type of coffee you're going to use. If it's Arabic, Italian, whatever it is, whatever coffee you want to use, you're going to research it. You're going to find the best price, the greatest return on investment, what your customers like, what your, um, 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 what, what, what you feel inspired by, what you love to sell. You're going to have that product and you're going to stick with it. You're going to research it. You're going to back test it. You're going to implement it and you're going to stick with it and you're going to make it work. You're going to own it and you're going to make it work. The same with your strategy. You're going to back test it. You're going to research it. You're going to test it. You're going to own it and you're going to stick with it. Um, And you're not going to, because if you've got a coffee shop, you're not going to jump one day from Illy, another day from another brand, another, I'm not a big coffee brand person, but from one coffee brand to another to another. You're just not going to do that because your business will fall flat on its face. The same with your trading business. You need to stick with a strategy. It's one of the things we say, master one strategy at a time. Master it. Own it. Too many people refuse point blank to own a strategy. They don't research it enough. They don't test it enough. They don't get comfortable enough with it. They don't own it to a point that it, to make it work for them, to meet their objectives. Another way of also trading as a business is understanding what your objectives are. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? 
work to your weaknesses and uh, through your strengths, the same as you would for any business. So there's, there's no ways on earth you cannot trade unless you are trading as a business because you are just being hobbyist otherwise. Because as a business, you're also a money manager. The same with trading. You need to be a money manager. There's three things. If you're losing trade, you need to ask yourself three questions. One, is it the strategy? Is it the market? Is it me? If you've researched your strategy and you own that strategy, well, chances are it's not going to be a strategy because there's no shortage of profitable strategies out there. Two, is it the market? No, it's not the market. The market does what the market does. It doesn't change. Three, is it me? Most likely, yes. So what are you going to do about it? You're going to keep on trading and hoping for a different outcome? No, that's just crazy, as Einstein says. You don't do that. And so, do you think do you think it's do you think it's partly because uh, that people struggle to get to the point where they treat it as a business? And I think that's what that's the point I'm trying to make uh, is that you know they spend eight hours a day working for a business, or they've got their own business which they spend eight hours or po- you know possibly twelve, fifteen hours a day doing, uh, and then they completely see it as like a way to escape. It's like I don't want to be doing what I've just you know somebody's paid me whatever X number of dollars to do for, for a day or, or I've earned this much money during the day, this is my time to, to not have to do that. Haven't I sort of bought the freedom ticket here with, with trading? Then, yeah, typically what I say to somebody who's, who would say that is then go and make money from a hobby that you love. Stop trading. Spend your time doing something that you really, really, really love. Like um, make, you know, if you love kayaking, go and make a kayak. And, and sell crafted kayaks, you know what I'm saying? So do something else because wealth building is not high enough on your values. Wealth building has to be the top, one of the top three in your values. And if it is, you'll be inspired to do what it takes. Now, most people don't trade as business because they don't know how to. It's not taught. Nobody in the industry freaking teaches it. You know, if you, like none of the educators teach how to trade as a business. And it's simple. Trading as a business starts with one thing. And it's the, it's, it's the single most important part of trading and any other form of wealth building and that is what is your vision what is your why and if you haven't if you if you're struggling to find your why read simon sinek's book what is it called um the what my why so simon sinek's book why or what is your why something like that um it's a very powerful book but you need to start off with your vision what is your why and if you if you're very clear about that, if you get that down, write it in five sentences. Start with why, Simon Sinek, that's the book. Write it, read that, and then synthesize it down to five sentences. Your be, do, and have in five sentences, and write it down somewhere. Put it in your diary, put it in your wallet, put it on the wall above your computer. Be inspired. Every time you read it, let it have goosebumps on your arms. Let it make your hair stand up. That's your why. That will keep you inspired. That will keep you focused. Then have a business plan. Do your business plan and know it by heart. Please don't just do a business trading plan and put it in the drawer. Learn it off by heart. Rehearse it. It needs to cover every eventuality. You need to be clear on your goals as well. What are you building this world for? What are your goals? And start stepping into one of the biggest biggest problems that people have is they sit and they say when my ship comes in stuff that get into the ship it's in the harbor get into it own it and start living that life you know you might not be able to fly first class around the world at this point in time but what can you do step into it step into those goals start making them real start chunking them right down to bite-sized pieces the other important part is when you've got those goals start focusing and spending your days on high priority actions at least 70 percent of your day needs to be focused on high priority actions if you don't your day will be filled with low priority shit essentially um literally you know so you and the high priority actions are taking you ever closer to your goals and when you're living like that you're really inspired and when you're in that inspired state you're vibrating at a very high level on in terms of like hawkins levels of consciousness and that's what van top says if you're not vibrating at a level of at least four 350 to 400 you're going to battle to be successful so if you're feeling worn down after a day's work and not inspired about trading go and do something else trading is not for you yeah. Now, that's, that's, be- before yeah. the show, Judy, you mentioned uh, the wealth thermometer. I mean, can you explain that and how it works? Well, the wealth thermometer is is a body of work that I've come up with, and where it's a whole a whole series of um, questions and exercises where we get to assess where you are on that wealth thermometer. 
So essentially, you know, what is your life showing? So it's very real, very practical. So what is your life demonstrating? Um, and then we extrapolate that and put it into this onto this wealth thermometer, and we see where exactly you are in that wealth thermometer, where you are actually vibrating on where your what your money relationship with money is, and your relationship with self is. Um, that when you see that, it's quite eye opening. Where you know majority of people that start this process, even people with a high net worth. Um, because of the way in which they're using money, spending money, and living life with money, there there can often be a low setting on the wealth thermometer. The wealth thermometer doesn't mean just about how much money you've got. It's about the it 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 is a visual representation of your relationship with money, and when from there we actually start working with, on ironing out what is the what is causing that, and we start you know back, we start reverse engineering it. What's causing it? And we start dissolving those issues that you're carrying around your relationship with money. So it's a very powerful process. Okay, cool. Look, um, I know that you've got something coming up uh, in the pipeline as well, which we mentioned before the show. So uh, do you want to tell us a bit about this 14-day Ninja Trading Challenge? Yeah, so we, we, we've done a 30-day Ninja Trading Challenge a few times, and it's been so successful. Really, really successful. And with that, uh, the 30 day challenge is like um, it incorporates uh, elements of trading as well as um, as well as um, mindset and money issues and stuff like that. So what we've actually done, is we've taken the best of the 30 days and we've made it a 14 day challenge. Um, and it's going to be 100 percent focused on um your relationship, getting clear about what your relationship with money is and how to shift it, but also how practically we'll show you and, and, and you will actually start working on making your trading a business. So what it is, each morning for 14 days, you will get a morning mission. It's a video, a five, 10 minute video that's sent to your inbox in the morning. And with a mission that you need to do during the day. And it covers things like the wealth thermometer. You'll find your number. It's a big issue, actually, is people get into trading with a fantastical idea of what they're going to make. They key in some numbers into a, a calculator and think, wow, if I get 9%, 10% a month, I'll be a multimillionaire in five years, whatever. They have a fantastical idea of what they can make out of, um, in trading but they can't relate to it. It's alien. If you're, if you're barely, if you've got more month than, than money and you've got this fantasy that you're going to be making five, 10 billion in five years through trading, you can't relate to it. So knowing what your number is, knowing what your target is for trading and making it a number that you can relate to and incrementally increasing that is vital. So what I, we've, I've got a program called find your number and we'll have elements of that in the, um, in the, challenge as well so we'll have we'll also be covering critical elements of the trade plan so that you can actually make trading a business we'll find that well i'll give you tips on how to find your why and marrying your why with trading and how they are intrinsically related we'll learn you know parts of them there'll be missions on learning to love the value of money how to and value and growing your self-worth in the process and unlock conscious behaviors and understanding how and where it is that you are setting up patterns or behaviors um, where that are interfering with your building of wealth or building of lasting wealth, because that is one of the things that we do. If we don't feel we deserve, we're going to or feel that we feel worthy of receiving wealth or money. You'll set up little unconscious behaviors that will interfere with the building of that lasting wealth because you feel you don't deserve it. So we will actually be addressing all of those issues in 14 days, 14 missions sent to your inbox in the morning. And then each evening we have a sort of like a 15 minute coach laser coaching session online. Nice. So, Sounds yeah. fantastic. Look, I, I think I'm going to give it a go as well, uh, Judy. So I'm looking forward to it. So that's coming up. What was the date again? It's the 11th of November. We start we're kicking it off on the 11th of November. The 11th is a Monday, isn't it? I think it is. So it is the 11th of November. 
Okay, brilliant. Um, well, look, I'll, I'll put a link in the at the end of the episode so that people can quickly get there. It'll be something like tradingnut.com forward slash Judy. And uh, guys, I'd like to see a lot of you jumping on board for this uh, like awfully generous offer of a free 14-day challenge. So um, once again, thank you for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure. And I'm glad we sort of touched on the, all these um, details around money and psychology which is something i don't do often on the show so and i know some other people out there have been listening have said look i want to hear more stuff on the psychology so i'm glad that we've got this episode under the belt cool cool thank you so much cam as always it's been such a pleasure talking to you really thank you brilliant thank you judy all right folks so there we are interview done on your relationship with money now there's some work to be done after listening to this, especially if you are struggling when you're trading, recommend jumping over to the 14-day challenge and it might make it a little bit easier to do this work. So I'm going to do it. It starts on the 11th of November 2019. Head over there, tradingnut.com forward slash 14 day. And uh, if you are listening to this in the future and you've missed the date, then head over to that link anyway. Who knows? I'm sure there'll be something there for you as well. All right, guys. Uh, do remember... You will also find links to this in the show description on your phone. Uh, so if you scroll down your phone, you'll find that there'll be a description area with links to the 14-day challenge. Or you can just head over to tradingnut.com, find Judy's show, and then there'll be links there as well. All right, folks, until next time, I wish you a great trading week, and I'll see you in the markets.